In today's three steps to sketch, we're going to graph the shifted secant graph, y equals two secant of x minus pi over two minus one. Taking a quick look at this equation, we see we should be using our shifted method because in with the x, we have this minus pi over two. That tells us we have a horizontal or phase shift. And then this minus one at the end tells us we have a vertical shift. So we'll dig into that in a little bit more detail right now. So first, here's our quick outline for our method. Step one, we'll find the companion equation and all the essential information that goes with it. The companion equation is simply the same equation, but just the reciprocal function. So we'll rewrite the equation and replace the secant with cosine, it's reciprocal. And we do this because it's likely that if you're graphing secant, you already know how to graph cosine. So we'll use almost all of the steps, really all the steps that we do for graphing cosine. We'll make one small transition at the end and we'll have a great secant graph. All right, so step two will be all about lightly plotting our companion pattern and taking care of those shifts. And step three is that step where we'll transform this into the reciprocal graph, sketch it in, and repeat. So a quick reminder of our general form for a shifted secant graph, it's y equals a secant bx minus c plus d. I always like to check that the input of the secant function does have that minus sign just so it's clear what our term c should be. In this case, it's just positive pi over two. Um, but if you did have a plus sign, remember that would just be minus a negative. All right, so let's go ahead and write out our companion equation. Same equation, just replace the secant with its reciprocal function cosine. So we'll write two cosine x minus pi over two minus one. Now we can start some analysis. A is that leading coefficient. It's a two in this case. That'll help us set our maximum and our minimum for our cosine companion pattern in the, in the next step. B is the coefficient in front of x, so we see that that's an understood one. So we should have one cycle of our graph happening between zero and two pi. And we also use that to find the period. Remember, that's just two pi over B. So easy enough, that's two pi here. And period's just the length of one horizontal cycle. Now we can choose scale labels. I like to be really intentional with the horizontal axis in particular. Take your period and divide by four, and this ensures that the beginning of step two, each of your key points will align with a horizontal tick mark. All right, so two pi divided by four, that simplifies to pi over two. That's how we'll count our horizontal axis tick marks. And then our vertical axis, one is gonna be a really good scale there. Double check your value A, but usually that works well. So let's take a minute and get our grid labeled. Starting with our horizontal axis, count by one pi over two. So we have one pi over two, two pi over two reduces to pi, three pi over two, four pi over two is two pi, and then five pi over two. All right, the negative side of this axis gets the same values, but of course with negatives, so we'll take a quick second to do that. Easy enough, but this setup just makes it really nice for our future steps. All right, so we've got the horizontal axis labeled. Label that vertical axis, counting by ones now. And we are set up to have a nice graph. Now we're going to dig into our shifts in more detail. We talked about this uh, briefly at the beginning. So a horizontal shift is actually going to be called a phase shift. And we find that using C over B. So remember C, check that sign. We have it the minus pi over two. And so C itself is just going to be positive pi over two. We know B is one. So in this case, our phase shift is pi over two. And if you wanna note that that means we're shifting pi over two units to the right, I think that can be helpful. So notice that's one horizontal tick mark is equivalent to pi over two in this case. D is our vertical shift. We see that minus one at the end. So we know we'll have a vertical shift down one you to write it down, go ahead and do that. All right, so we've done the bulk of the analysis. The last thing I like to do in step one is to actually find the asymptotes equation for our secant function. So this will tell us all of the asymptotes for our final graph. Now I'll post a link in the video description that will have videos on finding the asymptotes in a little bit more detail, but for now, I'll give you a quick overview. All you need to do is take the inputs of your secant function so that's x minus pi over two, do a little scratch work here. So take those inputs and set them equal to the parent asymptotes. 
So those are the asymptotes that happen for y equals secant x. And we should know that those happen at pi over 2 plus pi k. If you aren't sure, just check out a quick graph. You'll see that that's true. And this is where k is an integer. Basically, you're applying the horizontal transformations for your particular equation to those parent vertical asymptotes. And it'll give you the equation for your asymptotes. All right, so that's the setup. Now we just need to solve for x. And all you need to do is add pi over 2 to both sides. And note that pi over 2 is only like with that other pi over 2 on the right side. Pi k is its own type of term, so we don't need to combine those, or we cannot combine those. All right, so we'll write our final asymptotes equation in the blank. We have x equals, we know pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or just pi. And then we still have that plus pi k. So practice substituting in a few different integers for k here, and you're basically anticipating where those asymptotes will be. So when k is 0, quick simplify, we should have an asymptote at x equals pi. Let k be 1, there should be another vertical asymptote at x equals 2 pi. If k is negative 1, we should see an asymptote at x equals 0, or on the y-axis. So I like to do this right now just to have the, another way to double check the accuracy of my final graph. All right, so we've done the bulk of the work, we've done all the analysis, we're organized, we're ready for step two. We're going to start by lightly plotting our companion pattern. So I'm going to use light blue for this. And recall that the cosine base pattern starts on the y-axis with a maximum. First horizontal tick mark gets an x-intercept or a zero. Next one, that'll be a minimum. And then the final one in the pattern will be another x-intercept. Okay, so we'll start on the y-axis. To get the y-coordinate of this y-intercept, you simply look at the value of a. So mark this lightly. All right, then move to the first horizontal tick mark to the right. That'll be an x-intercept. The next one, so at pi, this will be our minimum. And to get the y-coordinate, just take the opposite value of a. So point at pi, comma, negative 2. And finally, we'll have another x-intercept at 3 pi over 2. So hopefully you can kind of see that companion cosine curve. And now we're ready to shift. So I'll mark these with X's. We're just working from these original light blue points, and we're going to apply both shifts at once. So we'll move right pi over two, and we'll move down one. Okay, so each of those is equivalent to one corresponding grid unit. So starting with that point on the y-axis with our y-intercept, move right pi over two, and down one, put an X. So do that for each of your points, right pi over two, down one, right pi over 2, down 1, right pi over 2, down 1. Okay, and I'll even sketch in this little cosine curve. I think it's nice to kind of see this. If you were graphing the companion pattern, we'll come up, that would be the start of the next cycle. If you were graphing this companion equation, you would be done. But since we're actually graphing the secant graph, we're ready for step 3, where we transition our key points into the reciprocal graph, our secant graph, then we'll sketch and repeat. So start with what was the y-intercept, that first point where with our x is, our intermediate graph right now, and put a point there at that maximum. Okay, that's going to be part of a secant curve. It's going to be specifically called a local or relative minimum. So it'll be kind of the bottom part of that secant curve in that area. Okay, next go to the point that was an x-intercept the x-intercepts turn into vertical asymptotes. And notice here, as I draw this one in, it's at x equals pi. And that's what we had predicted when k equals 0. All right, now I'll place a point on what is the minimum from the cosine companion pattern. That point is going to become a local or relative maximum as part of the secant curve here. All right, last point, that's going to be another vertical asymptote because it was originally an x-intercept. That was when k equaled 1. It's at x equals 2 pi. So now we're ready to sketch in this first cycle of our secant graph. So here's that part of the secant curve. We'll expand it in the negative direction soon. Okay. Our curve that has the local maximum there. And then I like to go ahead and place a little mini point there, what we know will become another local minimum, so that we have a full 
cycle of our secant graph. So that's all there is to it. Now you have the pattern and you can repeat it for as many cycles as you need. Okay, so of course we can just extend it out a little bit in the positive direction and now we'll work backward in the negative direction. So there's the other half of that secant curve working from our local minimum. We have a vertical asymptote. We're just working the pattern backward here. Notice that's what we predicted when k is negative 1. All right, place another point. That will be a point that is your local maximum. Another asymptote here. Practice with your asymptotes equation so that you get really comfortable with it. Hopefully you can predict this asymptote will come when k equals negative 2. Okay, and just keep working this pattern backward. You'll have several cycles here. When k is negative 3, I won't even write that out. Um, but you can double check it to be true. All right, so here we have three cycles of our graph. y equals 2 secant x minus pi over 2 minus 1. We've already done sort of a double check with our asymptotes equation. If you want to look back at b, we said that b is 1. We should have one cycle of the graph happening between 0 and 2 pi. So you can look between 0 and 2 pi to determine that's true. We have one cycle of our graph. And so we should feel really confident that this is a great sketch of our equation. Hopefully this helped you better understand how to graph shifted secant graphs with the three steps to sketch method. Um, I will post links in the video description with a lot more worked examples for secant graphs as well as for all the other trig functions, so be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching.